All right. Okay. We're ready, Ayana? I'm all here. All, all right. right. Cool. I'll start. All right. So if you're in the Valley world online, then you've probably come across one of Valley Conrad's podcast or one of his many Q&A videos on yes. turnout and placement or most famously his work with Misty Copeland. However, despite millions of views, Eric Conrad is seen as a controversial figure in ballet, and perhaps it's because he doesn't shy away from conversations about ballet's not so glamorous side. He's never afraid to call out body dysmorphia, the mental and physical abuse of ballet students, and the elitism and racism within the, in the, within the industry. He never sugarcoats his words and will flat out say that ballet teachers should take responsibility for the injuries of their students. Something unheard of in the dance industry. Eric uniquely trains his wife, Lana, who started ballet at the age of 34, initially to aid with health issues, and his son, Misha, who's 12. They have both made drastic body transformations with no major diet changes or cross training, just Eric's precise eye and in-depth ballet knowledge application. They recorded and documented their journey and which has turned into a family venture that has become the Ballet Conrad Institute. Please welcome Eric Conrad. Very so, good. Um, before we get started, I wanted to play a recent clip of a podcast that you released um, about a week ago, um, which is why this conversation is happening today. Uh, I'll play that. Now, if we talk about a couple things, well, let's start with a couple things inclusivity, inclusion. Inclusivity is, is just to not exclude. That's the simpler part. So <clears throat> ballet schools, which is where this needs to begin, right? You, you begin this initiative in the schools and then it extends to the company. They just simply need to not exclude people, right? So that's the simpler step. The complex step is to ensure that they have an education and training that gives them the opportunity the, and, and options, frankly, and choices to develop a career that they want. And this is not limited to just black dancers or brown or any particular color of person. This is across the board for everybody. Everybody needs this, okay? What I can say about equality is this. There, there already is a, a kind of unfortunate equality that exists in ballet and that is any student that enters the ballet education is getting injured right this is a this is this is not even controversial to say this is what happens so the last thing i know the last thing that misty would ever want is to usher in generations of injured black dancers right okay so starting with that clip you know, devastating, first... <laughs> devastating to listen to one's voice, isn't it? <laughs> it can be. Yeah. So how do you ensure preventing injuries and how does that create opportunities for diversity in ballet? Opportunities for diversity? Mm-hmm. Well, it, I think we need to define things a little bit, maybe clearer. Sure. That's what I mean. So maybe we can agree, not just the three of us, but just overall as an industry, if we can call it that, agree on what that exactly means. So diversity just in terms of race, okay, that we all understand that. But how about in what is created with the education and training? That's, I think I'm a little more, so, so I guess step one is, yes, you include people, but okay, but how about diversity of ideas and then what's done, let's say choreographically, or even the way in which you would develop the education from the fundamentals. So I'm offering the fundamentals, but surely things will go in different directions from there based on who is involved. That's the whole point, I think, of diversity, right? You want diverse ideas that come from diverse experience, that come from you know different cultures, whether we're all in America, but different, but separate cultures or different unique cultures or from international um, students and dancers and so forth. So I, I don't know if that if that's an answer, but ultimately in my mind, I would like to see ballet become something else without, I mean, without, without any real 
frame on it. Just here's the fundamentals. This is what you need. This is the language of ballet. Now run with it and let's see what happens and just let it happen. Just so just let, let it happen versus trying to impose a particular anything on people other than the knowledge that's just needed, the engineering knowledge that's needed to shape a dance or a show in, uh, in order so that people will want to pay to see it. I mean, if we're getting to the end of the, of the objective there, it's just to create a successful show, a successful company. Can you hear me? Or we yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's my answer. Okay. Oh, you want to get into more how to do it? Um, so, I, I mean, does that seem like a reasonable uh, objective, I guess, or view of the larger picture? I guess I want, wanted a little bit more in depth of, um, yeah, a, a more of how, yeah, I, that's what I think we should go into. Okay, but does that sound reason, reasonable as the what? Yes. So the what is the what? Okay. Um, so the how, well, the how is in the beginning is just delivering the information to everyone or making it at least available to everyone at low cost or no cost, depending on how it's organized. And so I'm an, a believer of just start, just begin doing what you can do and then kind of go from there. So the online courses and the Institute, that's what that is. That's just the starting point. Okay. Well, Here's some of the information. And ultimately, I'd like to grow that to kind of an accredited, like a real accredited institution at some point, and then monetize it in a way that doesn't exclude anybody, no matter what, no matter where they are in the world or who they are. So getting the information into the mind is the first step. But you, you also have to have the human to human in a studio collaboration to, to finish that job and, to, and then to maintain the integrity of it, you know, into the future. So how is first study <clears throat> yourself, even if that's what it takes, then get a group of people together who are all studying and start working on it, start working with it together, because it, it doesn't make sense for there to be one or two or three minds on this. Like my mind alone is surely not enough. Like we need more minds. We need as many minds as we can, as we can find to contribute to, the growth of this thing. Otherwise it just becomes kind of a monolithic thing that ballet is now, right? Mm -hmm. so, you have, so the the world of ballet, whether you're in Russia or anywhere else, uh, is it doesn't, I mean, they have cultural traits to them, but uh, technically, or in terms of the education, pedagogically, they're pretty much the same now, whether you're in New York or Moscow, or wherever you are in the world. And that's not good. That's not good. You, we need more minds and more ideas. Provided they all, they all come from what is demonstrably true, fundamentally, and that's just keeping your body healthy and safe is what I mean by fundamentally. What works? Okay. So, um, why are you the one to provide? Well, I, I obviously it'll it would eventually be a collaboration, but. How would why are you the one to initially provide the initial education to begin to develop the minds? Well, why it worked out this way, I have no idea. Just, <laughs> it, it, I have no idea. Like I don't, I didn't. There's no plan here. <laughs> I think the universe has a sense of humor, maybe the timing of it. But um, because okay, so about 20 years ago, I set out. Uh, I, I realized that the problem to be solved was. Um, injuries and and just the knowledge of the fundamentals because they 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 were starting to get lost when the soviet union collapsed if we're talking about russia uh, so that was the the in 1989 and then after that and so that collab the, the collapse of ballet as a result is started a long time ago and so i just recognized just through a variety of experiences here most of my ballet training as a as a dan dance training was here and then i went there to study choreography and pedagogy and just realized that there's problems that aren't even being talked about, much less addressed. So I just kind of as, I don't even know why, I just decided, well, someone's got to do it. Let's just start and see what happens. And then through a series of just wacky things, here here we are. 
I mean, I didn't even start teaching Svetlana, obviously, just because she had health problems that couldn't be solved by the normal healthcare system. And that's the only reason we're talking. That wasn't a plan either. So uh, why? I have no idea. I just know that I can do it and it needs to be done and it can be done starting tomorrow and we should not hesitate to do it. So it's not about me. See, this thing is not about me at all. I would rather it not be about me. I'd rather just, I, I'm in a position to provide the knowledge. I would like people to take that knowledge and run with it and develop what they want to develop. It, it isn't, it, you know, and then I can support that process of developing and then I can support maintaining the integrity of it as long as I'm alive to do it. But it, you know what I mean? I, I would not want this to be about me standing in the center somewhere, honestly. I want to comment on that because I think that's incredibly important with um, the dance culture in general these days. It's very, um, you know, the star instructor <laughs> forward thinking <laughs> rather, mm -hmm. instead of it being about um, the information that, that is being shared. So, I mean, with that being the answer to the question, why are you the one? I mean, that's a, that to me, that's a perfect um, response because mainly you're, you know, you're just saying that I'm, I'm, I'm not the one, I'm just the one who holds the information and I would love to share it, you know? Well, and it's not really my information. I mean, I, I've taken, you know, it's like standing on the shoulders of giants kind of thing where it's yeah. like 400 years what I what I'm able to do is to what I'm what I've really done, if you want to know, is just stripped away all the non-essentials. Mm -hmm. I haven't I, I, I've added, let's say, a way to organize the information to make it as simple to use. So in other words, what I'm adding or at least the attempt and it, it seems to be working is you don't need to study for five years before you can start using it. You can use it now. Th that's what I want for people, because if, if if we present this and go, OK, you need to get a master's degree and that's five, six years, whatever it is, that's okay. So that's another five or six years that people are going to see getting injured another four or five years to get good at teaching it. So we got another decade. That's not, that's unacceptable. We need to start tomorrow. And that's, so I'm presenting the information in such a way that it's hopefully useful now and that there isn't a delay that we don't need a delay. There's no, certificate needed or any of that that's why it's just wide open it's just, just go use it go use it and start using it and start asking me questions because my own ballet education that's really what it is in on a day-to-day -day basis when my professors did this teach this and i'm going to watch you do it and then just well they're a little bit less polite about it but right. you know they, they, you know it, you know they're just like do it you have to show me you can actually do it before you that's what your exam is you have to do it and then explain yourself and justify every single detail, you know, which is not the, the thing I'm putting out there. I'm, I think, uh, taking a different angle. But uh, the point is, I didn't invent this stuff, you know. Yeah. So it's not, it's not mine to, 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 it's not mine to even give or certainly not mine to exclude people from getting. It's like the sunlight. Like, you should just be able to walk out and absorb it. You know, like you, it's not, nobody owns it, you know. Right. Yeah. So um, following up with that, because, you know, Misty Copeland, and you guys work together for a season um, and anybody can watch it. And it's, you know, on YouTube and hours of and hours of you guys training together. And, you know, especially in the beginning of you two working together, it was kind of clunky and you know <laughs> it wasn't always pretty to look at but you know her results just were astonishing so why did you decide to release that footage um to the public or is that why you decided to release the, that footage okay yes yes i'll tell you why here's the thing let me just quickly tell you how we met online okay um it, it, see I've, i have a very um consistent, I think, approach here. So I, she has been getting, in my opinion, unfairly maligned since maybe before her promotion, but I, I didn't, I was in Russia. I didn't really know much about her until she was promoted, right? So she just gets unfairly maligned uh, left, right, and center. And so on Twitter, I just tapped in and said, well, she didn't teach herself, wait, did she? You know, so I think we need to look at the blah, 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 anyway. 
and then uh, she, she was a little snarky. And then I did a podcast to explain myself, like, this is what I meant. And then some months later, she emailed me and it all started. But I released it because because of that. It's not for my benefit. It's, it's because, okay, how many professionals, let's just say in New York, to keep it simple, were willing to do that? Only her. Yeah. Only her. And, uh, you know, so I, I don't know all of the, the charges that were against her. Like, I, I don't really know, but I'm surely it was all the normal crap, lazy and whatever, 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 whatever. Well, clearly not. Clearly not. So uh, I just felt like uh, I, it should be shown that not only is this what ballet actually is. So there's that piece of it. But she as an individual was willing to do what nobody else was in her world. And and frankly, uh, she it was not made easy for her to do it by the, that community there. Well, I mean, uh, you know, uh, we were not we were not being supported and celebrated for it. It was quite the opposite. And to her credit, she pushed. You know, she she. Um, push through she persevered you know like she really did it you know and yeah she danced beautifully uh, especially at wolf trap was kind of the highlight of the whole thing so you know it's not just that the training was very intense physically and i think emotionally and intellectually was the whole thing but then there was all the outside uh, nonsense that she had to cope with as well and she still did it so you know she deserves a lot of credit for that that's i mean that's why i have respect for her regardless of how you know, things uh, conclude that's irrelevant. The, 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 the fair the fair message is that she did what no one else was willing to do. She proved herself on stage. Case closed, I think. She deserves to be where she is in ballet. I, um, I expected, because I was, I was kind of watching in a real time, I was uh, following you before Misty um, Copeland came into the picture. And so I thought, for sure that after you had worked with her and she had done wonderfully and had, you know, had her amazing performances that other teachers, other professionals, other dancers, like this whole world would be knocking you, knocking down your doors, (laughs) begging for this information that doesn't seem to have, to have happened right away it might be happening slowly in other parts of the world why do you suspect that is the case why do you suspect it (laughs) well it sounds to me like you know if you were to and i mean i'm not trying to ruffle anybody's personal feathers here but it's to me as serious as challenging someone's spiritual beliefs or their religious beliefs like these are things that not only live in our bodies, but they live in who we are. So as someone who's protective of a certain, you know, style of teaching or style of thinking to then be told you are actually responsible for these injuries. <laughs> that's like, that's earth shattering to a person, I think. You well, because so, so ballet uh, is, is many things, but if, if we keep it to ballet, Ballet is really an identity, isn't it? It's it's not yeah. really something you just do. It, it's it's it it becomes a real part of your identity, if not a, a major part of it. And so, yeah, it's a cognitive dissonance thing, right? It, it's it's once you have a concept of of what ballet is, then that's part of the concept of who you are. Even though I would say from the outside, I understand the emotional part of it. I mean, I had the same thing. I went to Russia to discover that, so that was fun. <laughs> where they just tell you I mean I can't even repeat the words what they they just say you're an effing idiot you don't know anything yeah. you know, I mean they just come right across they don't care you know and so so I've been through that myself um but yeah it's it's well yes I know so I feel like maybe see I can't mind read I have no idea why people you know I just I just know what people tell me and not too many people talk to me about this who would be representative of let's say the profession in new york or something but i would imagine it's something like maybe uh there's this feeling that i have a bad intention of some kind like my intentions are not good maybe yeah. uh, so and which is easy to feel because a lot of people have bad intentions i mean i i it's not that i don't feel that too sometimes wrongly you know like i have to really challenge myself like okay, just, don't don't snap judge somebody just because 
because you never know. Maybe they didn't sleep well right. for three <laughs> for, for three nights in a row, and they're very irritable. And you know, we snap judge each other, not realizing something as simple as not sleeping can really mess with you, your ability to can regulate your emotions and all these things. So maybe there's just a there's a lot of bad intention things going on in ballet all the time. So perhaps it's just used to that and then just kind of map it on to whatever I sound like or look like or whatever it is. Maybe, I don't, I don't know. It, it could be, it's likely a combination of things that I hope we can work past. I think we need like a family meeting. I, I feel like calling a family meeting, like yeah. with the ballet world and go, look, let's just, let's just figure this out. Like, you know, I, I really just want people to succeed. I hope whether so. I'm at, whether I'm involved or not directly, you know, yeah, that'll be the name of the next one. Family <laughs> Ballet meeting. Family, family meeting. Family meeting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A talk. very dysfunctional family, but you know. <laughs> Is there any other kind? Is there any other kind? I don't know. Very much so. Uh, and so, okay. So, speaking of Misty Copeland, she reached recently mentioned that the diversity effort is working and there are more dancers of color being hired and definitely more students taking interest in ballet. Um, and while I personally commend the efforts of the longstanding establishments to correct the wrongs of the past, it all seems kind of performative. And my question, and this is, you know, just, this is just a discussion is, because I noticed this beyond dance, this is like in just about every industry. How do we keep ballet diverse beyond just when it's trendy? You know, right now it's super trendy to have a little girl of color in a commercial representing um, some company or um, to put dancers on the cover of whatever. And then they never actually get cast in anything or, you know, there's just several scenarios where they're, they're happy to use people of color as the faces of their promotions. Um, But, you know, once you boil down to it, actually working dancers. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. Uh, Can I, do you mind if I go a little weird on this one? Sure. Um, So, (laughs) Here's let me just tell you how my thinking has evolved on this in the last couple months because it has happened. So so Misty put out a, a children's book, right? Mm-hmm. And internally I was like, yeah, I was a little bit like, okay, uh, you know, because it's painting a picture of friendships and and all these positive things, which isn't what the profession <laughs> is about in reality. Okay, wait a minute, just just, just bear with me for a second. And I was thinking that, and then it's not just her, this is like a thing now, right? Children's book. And I thought, well, deceiving children is probably not a great thing. But then I'm thinking, no, no, wait a minute. If we put those ideas, those positive ideas in the minds of children, perhaps it will turn out that way, provided adults don't screw it up. So in other words, yeah, I mean, we shouldn't tell children like, look, this is what it's, because that's just to repeat the problem, I think. So I think maybe her effort has merit to it because yeah i think telling children positive stories is definitely better than telling them negative ones or even the truth which is that's an odd thing but what has to happen is that the adults in this situation need to well retire in some cases and you know make you know new generation uh, you know and those who assume the, the, the mantle so to speak need to be responsible and and do what we, what what we can to make what is in the children's book a reality. So obviously we, there's no way to you know reality is reality for a reason. But to try to at least use that as an aim and go well, why why does it have to be this this kind of stab in the back back to uh, you know cutthroat kind of thing? It just doesn't need to be that way. It just doesn't. It's just it's just you know a, a system um, or an institution in this case. These are just a lot of bad ideas that are hundreds of years old. That came out of the monarchies. Why are we still, why would we even do that? You know, so it's just a question, I think, of an, an, a group of people getting together going, look, let's just think our way out of this. Just like racism or anything else. It's like, okay, this is horrible. Let's just, we need to think our way out of this. And I'm talking about our own biases. I'm not, I'm not even saying like in the yeah. practical world. I mean, just internally go, well, 
okay, uh, this exists. Bias exists in our minds. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, our minds are pattern recognition engines, and they're not good at it, not yeah. good at interpreting it, what it means and everything. So, so at first I was a little bit like the children's books, but then I thought that too and go, no, maybe that is the way to go provided the real the, the work gets done on the adult side and that's the part i'm interested uh well we must do it you know now um what was your question the the the, the, the main point of your question because that wasn't it i didn't answer it for sure <laughs> um, well how to keep ballet not trendy and make yeah. this oh. real for 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 you know in in diverse communities because and I find that to be true, too. I'm going to kind of tie this back to something else that you said, Eric, about um, having the information available, you know, because if we're talking about ballet being trendy, it's like they're plucking these dancers that they're finding um, and making them the face of things. But like on a ground level at predominantly uh, there are schools of color, right? Predominantly schools of color, they don't have the ballet teachers with this information. So I'm thinking about how we get the information to the schools that we're, we're talking about or to the, you know what I mean? To those yes. populations that we're talking about because that that's that's essentially what needs to be well, tackled. I, I mean, isn't step one just having conversations and then, I mean, in my case, I can just show up. Mm -hmm, why, mm -hmm. why not that, you know? Yeah. I mean, just, I mean, obviously, having the information online is really step one. Like, just look at it at least and kind of familiarize with it, so that when I or you or somebody shows up, we're speaking. We have a common frame of reference. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So the reason to put online, because if I just show up, let's say just me personally, anywhere, and and the people there have not even familiarize themselves with it what happens is you get they get kicked into that cognitive dissonance thing in their mind where they go oh my god you know because i've done it I've, I've done i've had it happen in russia like i've done this where just show up like yay you know master class and i go okay well here we go and i think there's a video from years ago i did in la it was a class bnt it was one of those where i just showed up to do and I can't not be honest with what i see i just can't not do that so if if i see young dancers standing there and struggling with pirouette, and I know exactly why, I'm going to tell them this is what you need to do to sort that out. And it, it, you just see the reaction, and I've seen it enough times to where that's not the right way to do this. See, if I just show up to name a school or a company in New York or anywhere in LA, if I just show up and just go, boom, here's, here's what it is, I'm, right. they're not going to invite me back, and they're not going to be able to absorb the information. Whereas if it's online, I feel like, People can go and, and deal with that privately, however yeah. they need to deal with it. Yes. And then when they're ready to talk, uh, you know, then, okay, great, let's talk. And then when I show up, we all kind of know, they know what to expect instead of it being a car crash of information, yeah. you know. So I, the how, I think, is that, that now the trick is how to get people to engage online because they're just, from what I've found, the profession and the professional schools and the and and the pre-professional students and say their parents don't want to watch videos. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As well, they just want it. They just want it directly because they don't know what it is. Yeah. Right. You see that they they think they want it until I, I've hand holding the, and the occasional. Well, it's it's but once they realize they just don't you know it's it's, it's a deer in headlight kind of thing. Oh, so yeah. I, so I and I've it. explained this. I try to explain this. You know, like, well, look, just go familiarize yourself. You don't have to master it. Just go look at what this is, and then we can talk. And then when we the talking works, then we can. There has to be stages, right? There has yeah. to be steps. I think well, that, that's just my opinion. I don't know what do you what would you say about specifically your community. This it's for you. That... It's for you to tell me uh, what, how best I can, um, you know, what I can do to make that easier. I think that uh, that is, um, you know, doing it online for sure is is the move. I also know from just personal experience that, and I know you're, you've done this already, um, but dancers of color seeing other dancers of color is always the way. Okay. You know what I mean? That's always the way because if I see... I mean, even younger, you know, I, I could see a teacher work wonders on someone whose body looks nothing like mine and be like, of course that works on her. Mm -hmm. But what you're giving works on everyone. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. For, for us to be able to see it, 
on a you know a young girl or an older or whoever that is it's always about representation because it then it becomes true in my mind that it it could work for me and i okay. think the same with instructors and so we should I, oh, I actually good. have a question for you regarding that if okay. you don't mind oh no so, no, no, no. Uh, so I personally have been, you know, reaching out to a ton of, you know, ballet teachers. Like, you know, we've had these conversations and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and something I'm running into is just a lot of resistance with just the openness to even give it a try. Like, they, yeah. there's like a hesitant, even with me, you know, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like, okay do you have any ideas on how to connect that bridge or cross that bridge? I don't want to answer a question with a question, but I'm kind of going to do this. Okay. <laughs> well, I think that that for me has um, just brings up like anxiety around the microwave generation mentality of they want a performance. You know what I mean? They want to show at the end of the semester. And if you're talking about placement you're not talking about working on fuetes and jumps and all these things. You know what I mean? So in their mind, I think it's hard to absorb that this is the, the information that you're giving will yield the same results. But it's hard for them to digest that because they're not understanding that, you know, there's a pace and there's an order and there's a way that you get there. They're just looking at product, 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 product. There um, is a bridge. Yes. There is a bridge. You want to know what it is? Yes. Are you, are you, no, you can finish your thought. I just wanted to. Oh no! I and I and I mean th that that is the point is that showing them the bridge. I think is the thing. And if you know Eric, please chime in there. But I think that that's probably everyone's hesitation. Something new and at a different pace and a different language. Is this going to yield the same results? And how do we do that? You know, how do we show them that? Well, may I ask a question of, of both of you? Sure. So um, that's pretty much why one of the reasons I wanted to work with Misty was exactly that. Because what happened is all she did for the whole, it was a year, really. It wasn't just the season. It was, um, she faced the bar and then, and then we used that, those coordinations that I was able to get her to feel physically and to understand intellectually straight to her choreography. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there was no class, you see. Mm -hmm. So it's actually much faster progress to get to the performance than doing it the traditional way. The traditional way, we all know, is you, you take class and you rehearse for a thousand hours. And then, so this is just, for her, it was about 45 minutes to an hour of, it's intense physical work. It's conditioning your body. That's what it is. It's, you know, it isn't, you know, and then straight to the choreography. Now, this is especially going to be useful for existing schools because they all already know kind of what ballet is like misty already can dance she already knew all the movements and everything so i you know it wasn't about going th why does she have to do a class right condition, condition your body to be strong and coordinated and then what that does what that does is it just it kind of updates all of your technique just like you would update your phone without you even really recognizing <laughs> it yeah. you know I mean? so so i think that's the bridge and that's what i wanted to show and we did show it but there's still this this disconnect so that would be my question uh, and i don't know if you have a, a specific answer that's just a question i'm putting out into the world and particularly um uh, your community is okay well well there it is mm -hmm. on a person that you can um, recognize as you as yourself yeah so uh, what are we waiting for and why <laughs> is my question you know oh i'm ready to go like Today, so. No, no, individual. I, you know, but anyway, as like you said, but you're still getting resistance. You know, oh, yeah. every which way. Yeah, I, and um, I also wanted to talk about some of the, the resistance from. Um, no, this is this isn't necessarily just concerning skin color. This is just in general. Um, the education of parents. It's not always that there's resistance. It just feels like. The more that ed the the more that parents are educated, the easier this whole process would will be. Um, in the sense that they're going to start asking for, okay, what is this turnout stuff? What is this placement stuff? And why can't my child do it? Or why is my child getting injured at eleven or twelve in well, their ballet class? 
maybe an analogy is useful for parents. And the analogy goes something like this. Okay, so let's say you sent your child to a private school, any school, but let's just say private because they're paying for it, right? Yes. You send them to a private school, and four or five years later, they're illiterate still, and they can't do math. <laughs> Would you accept that? Would you no. pay $100,000 to have your child not be able to read, write, or do basic math or think? Right. No. Okay, because that's what's happening in ballet. Right. It that's is. it. Bottom line, like you pay this money or whatever, it doesn't, scholarship or not, a scholarship to be injured is no scholarship at all. So, to, to, so they go and train for, you know, five, six, seven, eight, ten years, and you get medical bills in the mail as your prize. That, that's, how, how is there an argument there from a parent? Go. Other than if somebody who's just, you know, wants to, you know, their kid to be part of this club of whatever with a name. I mean, that's just uh, that that's that that's just people like that. That's fine, you know. But yeah. just for the thinking parent, it, that's the analogy that I've used, and it seems to wake people up a little bit to go, oh. Well, that's that's um an interesting point because I do find that to be kind of common. Is the parents um seem to be really attached to the name associated with the institution like they're they're like oh well my child has a scholarship to so and so or they just got into whatever in summer intensive and and again <laughs> like you said it it doesn't matter because ultimately they're going to end up injured because there's not enough of the they don't understand what ballet is or the process of learning it at this point. And um, I'm wondering if, if maybe well, my efforts should be turned toward the parents a little bit more than ballet teachers. Well, why don't we define what success is for parents right yes. now? So here's success. Uh, this is my definition. You feel free to have your own, but how I would define it fundamentally, I'm talking about in ballet now or in life, but let's just state of ballet to keep things simple. I'd say, well, my definition of success for anyone in ballet, anyone at any level doing anything at all, is to first become aware of their potential, which is my job, and then to be given the, the knowledge and tools and understanding to achieve it fully. That's also my job, but it's in your job. But it's so to me, that's success. So whether or not you, someone wants to be in the profession or they're an adult, it, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. I, I think that's a reasonable uh definition of success is recognize what your potential actually is because nobody does because you can't you can't know that in the beginning i mean the professionals don't even know it now misty mm -hmm. surely doesn't she didn't know she doesn't know now she's capable of way more than you'll ever see than you've ever seen way more way more like uh, i remember like um like, this is what i told her and her husband when we first met i said well she's dancing about 20 percent of her ability Wow. What? Yeah. <laughs> and then in a, in, a, in a season, we probably got that to 40%, oh 50 wow. maybe. And no, that's just she. But there's, I mean, there's tons of talent. There's no shortage of talent in, in ballet. Uh, dancers. Uh, uh, and teachers are much harder to find because it's a whole other level of education needed to do that. But right. there's talent everywhere. It's a question of the talented person recognizing that they have it, for one, and then being put on a path to realize it. Uh, again, I, I maybe that's a decent definition for parents. I don't know. Do you want your child to succeed? Yes. Here's what that means. <laughs> Here's what that means. It doesn't mean that they have a shirt with a logo on it. That's not where they go to the competition. Hey, I mean, I'm not uh, against people having fun and doing their thing at all. But, the, you know, there has to be the fundamentals there to support all that. Yep. Just my opinion. Yeah, you don't seem to really have a... Um, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but you don't you don't seem to be uh, attached to any particular way in which people do use the information. You just want the information to be there. Am I correct? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I care that they're supported because it, it, there's the complexities here and there, which, uh, you know, I want to get better at supporting or, or create more options for that. But no, no, I don't at all. I mean, if there's ice skaters using it, you know, there's a all kinds of interesting people that have nothing to do with ballet that are just, I don't even know why, like architects. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jiu-jitsu. <laughs> Jiu-jitsu engineers. So there's, there, there is a fundamental human thing about this that's useful for everyone, just for your health. So that's another side of it. But um, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't. I just want people to benefit from it. I just want people to benefit from it in the way that they want to benefit from it. Yeah. That's why I'm, I kind of am saying it isn't about me tr with a particular agenda other than be healthy. Let's start there. <laughs> because the, the injury thing is not hard to solve. It really isn't. It, it doesn't require a, a wholesale uh, change of curriculum or anything. It, it, it doesn't require that. It requires a very precise application of it in various ways, which is too complicated to put into just words with sure. no demonstration. But, you know, for example, any school can just start integrating this right now. And like I said, it just updates the whole thing without you really trying. You don't have to sit down with a large group of people and go, okay, we, uh, t because the, the truth is there's only – two kinds of ballet, it, correct and incorrect. It doesn't matter what country <laughs> it's from. It doesn't matter what style it's from. Mm -hmm. The fundamentals of our bodies are the same. Yeah. They're the same. It doesn't matter if you're <laughs> safe even, if you're round or not or what, it, it makes no difference at all. It's, you have hips. Okay, ballet is this. It's your shoulders, your ribs, your hips and the relative position of your legs. Well, we all have those <laughs> and therefore those can be developed and yeah. coordinated and that's, uh, that's what it is. So it, it doesn't matter what if you style is irrelevant, style is downstream from conditioning your body. Yeah. So there was an, um, an article about you now in point magazine that was published, um, a few weeks ago. And it, it, the author mentioned using, you know, going through the heel or putting your weight in your heel, which is something I know that is in your, um, trainings and, and teachings, and that seemed to light a lot of different ballet threads, <laughs> a lot of ballet teacher threads on fire. And it was just oh, it? that one, <laughs> one article seemed to have people fighting back and forth. And it was like, well, if that one simple idea is already getting people to go at each other, um, <laughs> what are they going to do when... <laughs> When you, when you're before you answer, I want to comment on that because um, Patricia, you know, when you and I were working together, mm -hmm. I was very, very thankful for where I was mentally with my relationship with dance in my body. Because mm -hmm. if you would have done this a couple years ago, not even a couple, I'll say five plus, <laughs> it's been a couple long time. But if you would have done that a while ago. Not only what my, um, not only would the rate that I was, you know, growing would have slowed down, but just my intention would not have been that great because I would have been so like questioning everything you were doing in the sense of like, is this gonna, you know, I don't know if this is correct. I'm just gonna do it this way. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yeah. that's, that's what people do. But I'm saying. I'm glad that I'm, I was in a place where I, I have worked with so many different types of uh, training and so many different instructors that being open and committed to the learning and the work, however it's coming, is a huge thing. You know, can, I, so. can I ask a question of you? Well, sure, yes. So I, if I understand, this is from like, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes ago. I just wanted to, I, I meant to ask then. And, so... <clears throat> Is this true that it would be useful to have uh, to develop the institute further with also dancers of color, different people? Right? Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. Yeah. That's what. So that's that's something that I should make a priority then. Like, I mean, the same thing I'm doing with my own family, but with every different kind of person, ages yeah. and everything. I think. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I think that would be effective. A lot. It would help. <laughs> it would help people find you more approachable <laughs> in my honest opinion I mean, and, and not only on a personal thing but I will say that we're also tackling even outside um, ideologies about what, what dance is anyway you know you mm -hmm. have people who I have people who can look at me right away and be like oh you're a dancer aren't you but then I have people who would be like oh you're a little thick for a dancer or <laughs> you're a little shapely mm -hmm. or whatever your ideas around what you think dances will automatically uh, keep you from trying it if you think that you are, like you said, excluded from what it's supposed to look like in the first place. So showing someone that, yes, it works on all. This, this is movement. 
This and is that's body and, conditioning. This is and, for and bodies. You know? That's really why I came across your channel and, you know, was watching anyway because Svetlana was doing it. And I was like, oh, th well, this is different. Nobody, I had not seen this yet. <laughs> Nobody has ever attempted this. And mm -hmm. then it seemed as if uh, anybody who tried to debate or question what you were doing, they didn't have results anywhere near Svetlana's to, to, show you know <laughs> so it was like um well he clearly knows something yes yeah. so it, it was easy to to stay along so I think adding more to that and um you know with the diverse body types especially you know the knock knees the bow legs the the uh sh the the super long torsos you know yeah the, you know the, I, I think um probably part of my the disconnect maybe that I have intellectually is I, I think I'm really geared my mind more of an engineer than a ballet teacher because <clears throat> that's how I see it. You know, I, I see it like, so I'll see you from the front and I, and I'll be able to tell you what's going on all the way around, yes. you, you know, top to, and versus thinking of it superficially. See, I never see, here's the thing. I, uh, <laughs> let's say you're in the studio with me, this Ayana, let's say, for example, mm -hmm. um, and we're, so it's you and me, we're at the bar, we're looking in a mirror. Mirrors, by the way, I, I have, there's a real dilemma there, but if you <laughs> want to talk about that, we can't. The mirrors are not that useful in, in a lot of ways. They are, but anyway, we, we can go into that if you want. But So we're standing there, you and me, bar, mirror. So you, I can't tell you what you're thinking about when you look in the mirror, but it's not the same thing I'm thinking about almost certainly. Uh, and I think because... You'd have to tell me this. I'm looking at math, you understand? So I'm looking at your body as an instrument, let's say, that we're trying to create and shape and tune, a, a dance instrument. Yes. I'm not looking at you um, in that context as, as just a woman, you know, like how we would in a social or whatever situation, how normal yeah. people look at you. So for me, it's all engineering at that point. When I step into the studio, it, it's all engineering. It's all okay, we got it. I want to accomplish this or you want to accomplish this and here's how we're going to do it. it. It isn't like a personal, it's a personal thing because we're in each other's space and you're in a leotard or whatever. So it's, it's personal, yeah. professional, but in my mind, my mind goes into a whole different mode that I guess would be best described as engineering. And so maybe that's where there's a, some kind of differential between how I communicate versus how the, the dance world tends to communicate. And maybe that's why, maybe there's a fear of judgment maybe mm -hmm. more so coming off of me even though as i just said it's really the opposite of that but i'm not sure how to communicate that other than to just demonstrate it right so go in the studio and do exactly this but ultimately that would be something i guess you would let's say it's you and me you would have to say like how you felt i suppose you know being as you are who you are and all that i don't know what do you think i mean for me personally i think that that is incredibly, um, <laughs> for lack of a better word, attractive in a, you know, in someone who's training me. Um, I've always been a, how can I say this? A dancer that's concerned or a mover that is concerned with my biology on top of the artistry, right? Not like as a dancer, just how do I get my, how does this happen mechanically? Mm -hmm. um, but that is that has to do with just learned experience, you know, working with people who didn't speak the same language as me or, you know, that <laughs> are using analogies to get me to do what I need to do. Um, but I don't know. I don't know how to to really spawn a new thought process for these younger dancers, because I, even my students, I, I speak to them this way. You know what I mean? I, I, I'm yes. always speaking to them in a way of mechanically, how does this make sense? Or even when I'm talking about my choreography, I'm like, you guys do my choreography all the time. You know, most of the time I'm going right, left, right, left. So if you're lost, I'm probably going to the left because mechanically that's what we've been doing this whole time. You know right. what I mean? Right. So <laughs> I totally, I totally can understand that. I just know for a fact that these dancers are not being brought up to think that way. And that would no. be incredibly helpful. Analogies, analogies, right. analogies. We, well, that's all an we yeah, got. analogies are are good to introduce something, but um, you're right on a on a kind of ongoing basis that, well, geez, I don't know where we should go with this, but 
the way well because the, the frankly okay you're both adult you're both adults yes. i'm an adult so that makes it very easy for me to work with you because the only way you're really going to progress to the extent that you want is if i help you feel that which you need to feel to um let's say do whatever technique now here's here's the difficult part and this is true for any athletic endeavor how do you go from being strong and coordinated or not being strong and coordinated in a particular movement to being strong and coordinated? How do you, how do you do that? Because th there's a jump that you, there's like a, there's a, there's a valley there that you have to cross that you're not capable of doing. So in order to acquire the strength and coordination, you have to be able to do the movement right. in order to be able to do the movement. You need the strength and coordination. So how do we get that done? Well, I physically have to t take my hands and put your body in that position and hold it there while you do a tondu, let's say. So let's say I would have one hand on the side of your hip and one hand on your shoulder, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'd say, okay, do tondu. And then the hip's going to try to get away from you and the shoulder's going to try to rise up. So I just sort of gently hold it there so you feel that. Okay, okay. now engage your lats on the shoulder side and engage your rear on the hip side. Now do it again. And then you feel it and then you can repeat it. And that's how it's done. So uh, figure out that dilemma. How, how to, I mean, you're both adults, so that's an easy question. You, you, I say, are you okay with this? You say yes, and then we do it. That's what it is. Right. Is. But with children and, and, you know, oh, for me, for you, I don't know. Maybe you'll probably be okay. But for me, I, it's the liability seems uh, prohibitive. Of course. Of course. I mean, I, and I, you know, <laughs> I always kind of make an announcement. And then I'm being, you know, I'll be straightforward and say, for sure, it's different for you, especially being a male in the room. Like, there's all kinds of things going on, you know, with people and, but I understand that. But I literally, I tell my students, especially ones I've had for years, like, definitely just tell me if you don't want me to touch you, but I'm going to. I have to, you know, <laughs> for certain yeah. things. Like, I'm going to adjust you. I need you to feel what this feels like. I need to pull your leg out of your socket. Sorry. Yeah, I, I'm <laughs> never uttering out, those like, words you know ever. I mean? Right. <laughs> so it's, it, you're absolutely right. For adults, it's a different, you know. It's a different yeah, because we can we can like say yeah that's that's fine like we're there we're making yeah. the decision to be there. Yeah. Oftentimes, I um, you know if I'm real honest, I I'm a little bit uh, myself as a female teacher. Just, like I'm a little bit concerned with kids. You know, like it's it's always like a okay. Yeah. Maybe that's why I record everything <laughs> like, yes 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 and uh, I, I you just you get yeah. a little freaked out in situations where you're just like okay like the the best way to make this work you go through the the whole talk of everything you know <laughs> like okay, right, okay. Can, <laughs> so, can i ask you something yeah so you asked uh, earlier like how how to get this done right okay mm -hmm. so let's let's just paint a picture and he, <clears throat> you tell me how this done. okay so Let's say, let's just keep the word simple. So let's say, I don't know, uh, choose a school, uh, dance theater of Harlem, it doesn't matter, or Alvin Ailey. So right. let's say it's all, all the students in the room are black, okay? Mm -hmm. And there's a particular need of knowledge of placement and so forth. Mm -hmm. And me being the one who's presenting the information, what do I do in that situation? And they're teenagers, let's say. Or adult. And so, because this adds another layer, doesn't it? I love yeah. this question um, because I've been in a similar situation that, uh, you know, I love what you were saying about hearing the children's book and first being like, ah, and then being like, okay, this is useful. <laughs> we're all yeah. in those type of situations. And I have a situation that is similar to this question or answering this question. When I was in uh, London with my, um, best friend who she dances for ballet black oh, okay and, I, know uh, I was just kind of assisting the director you know with just helping the dancers out that day in general just with whatever makeup anything they need and at the end of the show um there was a group downstairs that had come from the states i'm not sure where but they were like a black travel group that you know they go a bunch of places and see the arts support the arts mm -hmm. and i remember the director um being like, Yana, Yana, I, I know you're, you know, helping them out, but could you go downstairs and, and, and talk to them, basically, because they wanted to speak to the dancers. Also, to just tell them the dancers were coming down, like, just kind of facilitate it. But I do remember thinking to myself, 
she, as a white woman, does not want to go downstairs and be like, "Hey, I'm face ballet black." <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And, I, and 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 I had a I had a minute about it. I had a little issue in my head, but I mean, there was nothing malicious there. I, I love her. I, I would do anything she asked. But I just remember feeling some type of way about it, you know. And then I thought to myself, "No, I shouldn't feel some type of way about it because one, that's a very conscious thing thing for her to be conscious of, and um, two we're talking about bridging gaps. And it is important for other brown people to see other brown people in these spaces. You know what I mean? So yeah. it does so not soften the blow. It's not necessarily a blow. And that's not the word that I'm trying to say, but it does soften receiving that this information is coming from someone that doesn't look like you, but it's still information that's necessary. Or in her case, it's still necessary to create these spaces for black and brown and Asian dancers to be in, dancers to be in. So um, in saying that in a room full of uh, black dancers or teenagers, or young students, you know, that's a time where I think it would be beneficial to have someone like me or Patricia or someone that you've been working with of color to, you know, it, it not Stop just in the you know, blow. <laughs> teach, but a demonstrating or, you know what I mean? Like have mm -hmm. a liaison like, situation. Like the first hour is maybe you demonstrating with um, somebody you're working with. And then the second hour or whatever is with the students, you know, being able to, to, to understand what it is already or, and see the difference. And I don't know. <laughs> it is hand holding, but I mean, it is what it is. It is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it well, gets I, I the, think the it would be done. better not to be a one-off thing. It would be better to do like a week or two. So you get to know yeah. people a little bit. Because that's just any people. If I walk into any ballet studio, it doesn't matter what color. People, they're not going to be comfortable right away. Right. You know, <clears throat> because particularly with me, just because it's a different, it's a something different coming in. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, it's it's all good to think about. I I just need your perspective, I suppose, because for me, I don't really view the world that way. <clears throat> I just think, well, yeah. someone who wants to learn is someone who wants to learn. I, I really don't care about the detail. You know, it's, I'm not there for that. I'm there just to provide what is wanted mm -hmm. and then do, and that's that. You know, I see it as more of like a, I don't know, I'm like a plumber and you know, I just come in and here's the thing you need and there it is. And I'm gone. You know, it's, it's, for me, it's, I guess I'm way simplifying it in my own head, what the interaction would be or how it's received maybe, but I'm just giving you my side of it. I just feel like I'm there to provide, a, you know, a service or whatever. And then yes. that's that, but it's not that simple, clearly. Yeah. We wish though. We want it to be. Yeah, we do. We do. Uh, well, it probably could get there. It's just yeah. some steps, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's, oh, oh, when I was talking about the resistance from the, the teachers that I was um, trying to start conversations with, it's starting to soften a bit as I uh, continue with like my case studies to show them like, hey, th this is working for this person and this was working for that person. But it's also um, interesting to, to hear the reactions from you you know about you um so either in it, it kind of goes either you know love or hate <laughs> oh no i i know what it is i, yeah. I, I don't know <laughs> I mean, no, it's basically basically uh yeah no it's always some version of i don't like him but he's right so, yeah <laughs> basically i'm yeah. gonna make a t-shirt with that on it probably <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm just that not sure. Would... I'm not sure liking is necessary. I mean, no, maybe it's it not. is. It's not. It, <laughs> is it really? I mean, uh, number one, we don't know each other. You know, like no, none of them know me. You know, so I don't know how you just immediately not like. You may not like the, the delivery or the vibe or something, but you can't not like someone that you've never even right. interacted with. I've never had that happen where they like, go into a studio with someone and then it goes sideways. Never. It's always really. You know, it's always really good. But people never leave the studio thinking less of themselves. They always just realize there's way more potential. Always. That's or uh, that's my favorite good. feeling when I leave is like, wow, I don't know shit. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh yeah, I think I said that too. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I that's like... invigorating to me. I'm kind of you know, I'm crazy. So that that's like, well, damn, I gotta come back because like, what do I even you know? That's that's yeah. how I think. But oh, I've been there. Better. I've been there. Yeah, the Russians made sure of that. Yeah. 
I was yeah. like, I feel like I've been pretending to do ballet. My right. Life. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, but it was kind of imposed on us all. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's nobody yeah, cho- mean, choosing to not know. It's just, we just inherited all of this from, you know, various who, who knows, you know. That's why I think it's time to sort of reset a little bit. Go, okay, not knowing what we now know, we can make some choices. Let's have a family meeting. Right. Yeah, exactly. Family meeting, yeah. <laughs> Ah, well, we did it. We uh, we solved equality in ballet. Yeah, we knew exactly what to do. Yeah, I, can you leave me out of that? <laughs> you oh, you two solved it. You, you <laughs> implicate me in this. <laughs> Go to but at least, after this. at least we have an idea of you know a real discussion, real solutions. It's one thing that I really. I mean, I appreciate many things about um, your platform and and what you've done, but one of the things I appreciate most is you not only point out problems and observe them, but you try to put forth solutions and, Mm -hmm. you know, things to to make things better. And that's what I hope these conversations lead to is, you know, yes, we can talk about the problems, quote unquote, but. Let's also talk about possible solutions to make things Well, you better. have to have the solution. Yeah, anybody can point out. Well, that's how ballet teaching is done, isn't it? It's like it's observations of things that don't look right without yes. the, without going, well, because that's just – that's not a correction, actually. Correction is a horrible word, by the way. It doesn't, it's, it's, to, it's to insinuate that something's incorrect. Well, no, it's just a process. You're just in a process of, crea- of building something that isn't meant to be that way by nature. <laughs> so, of course, it's not going to be – well, correct is just the is correct is an incorrect way to go about making corrections. It's just it, it's um, yeah. So the, the teachers just make observations. Oh, your foot's this, or your leg's that. It's like that's useless. You, you just give. But it, but from my experience, if you give, it doesn't matter the age, the person, information. It actually works. People actually will use it in it when it comes together. Teachers just need to understand the process. It's a process. And the process doesn't go like this. Well, step one through ten, and we're good. No, it's, it's the analogy is like a train, right? So the train's moving forward, and sometimes you're sitting still on it, but it's still moving forward. Sometimes you're running in the same direction, so you're really progressing. Sometimes you're going backwards on the train, but it's still moving forward, and that's how it feels. That's how yeah. it feels. It feels to you. I mean, that way, like days. You know, there's just going to be days where it's just nothing wants to work, but it's still progress. It just doesn't feel that way. But on my side, I know that already. So that's why I don't have to get mad and frustrated because I know already what's going, what's happening. It's okay. No big deal. It's just, it is, it just is that. Tomorrow that's kind of, will be different. That's yeah. kind of uh, funny. Cause I have a, I have two students that do competitions and one of them um, just, you know, she won a competition or whatever, and she sent me the critiques or something. And it was funny that this 10 year old is being judged like a professional, you know <laughs> what are the critiques the the critiques were actually kind of like oh well her feet are sickled and her fingers i mean she still got the highest score in the entire competition against like 19 year olds and things but it was that her fingers and her feet weren't perfect and yeah, you know everything fingers that, and feet yeah. yeah yeah the two most irrelevant parts of your technique oh, exactly. Nice. exactly but they love the way she moved but it was... yeah well the, 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 look when, whenever you tense up <clears throat> it's you're going to see it in your feet and your um in your hands right so yeah. this is a horrible example i shouldn't use it but i'm good anyway so like because uh, i like mma watching it you know yeah mm-hmm. when someone gets knocked out unconscious really badly what happens their feet go fl- yeah, completely they flexed. Dangle. Yeah, they, yeah, they, they right. They they flex and then they. So that's where, that's where things happen when there's tension. So if you deal with the, if we replace tension with placement, you know, uh, coordination and strength, then then the hands and feet just relax naturally. So do the ribs, by the way. Things relax when you put the focus in the right place. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did you want me to explain that heel thing a little bit, or did we? Yeah, did we, yeah. We please, to, please, yeah. Go the, ahead. The, the heel thing is is look. Ultimately, the goal is let's do, let's say, let's to keep this simple, tendu to second position, right? Mm-hmm. The I, what we're trying to build is a body that does this, okay? Let's say we're doing tendu with the right leg. We're trying to build a, a body that does this. You move the right leg to tendu without pressing on the floor at all, because both sides of your 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 butt are working, 
your left leg, your standing leg is working, your core is working, your back is working. That supports all the weight. Mm -hmm. So you don't, that's where you don't transition your weight ever, right? Mm -hmm. So the idea is the, the moving leg, all it does is straighten. It doesn't push anymore. In the beginning, it pushes because you have no way with which to leverage it in the beginning. But the end goal is there's no weight on that leg that's moving from, right? So mm -hmm. why the heel? Well, when if okay, you can. Are you sitting down, both of you? Yes. Yeah. Stick out a leg from your chair. If you're in a chair, stick out a leg, and point your foot first with a with a bent leg, and then point the foot as hard as you can, and then straighten your leg. Okay, you doing it? Yeah. Okay, relax. Okay. Stick your leg out, loose leg. Flex your foot as hard as you can, and straighten your leg. So much easier to straighten your leg and keep it straight with a flex foot. That's yeah, why you focus easier. on the heel. That's why you focus on the heel. Right. Because the leg needs to be straight to connect to the hip. Mm -hmm. So turnout powers your legs. Turnout, that rotation is how you move the leg ultimately when you're coordinated, right? So yeah. Sitlan is in that place right now, right? So in the center, no bar, no holding on, no shifting of weight. That's why you focus on the heels in the beginning is to keep the leg straight. Because you, because if the leg bends, the hip loosens. If one hip loosens, the other hip loosens. If that hip loosens, the standing leg loosens. Then the core loosens and the back loosens. Then you're either on the floor or hanging on a bar somewhere. <laughs> and that's what happens. So that's why the heels. It's very easy to explain. You see, it's not. There's no debate to be had. That's 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 biomechanically how we work. Yeah, it makes so sense. That's, that's yes. the heel thing. Way out of context, but anyway. No, I, I mean. Like Needs to be talked about. <laughs> like we should do another one where we just ask you ballet questions. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, I was thinking about doing that like uh, like weekly, like on a Sunday weekly, just do a little like fireside chat thing or whatever. Just but to where it would be like um, I don't know a periscopey kind of thing. Although I think periscope's going away, but maybe YouTube where people can just type right and say. Or, you could just go live. Know. Yeah. 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 Facebook, even Facebook Live would be good. You can uh, tag. Oh, YouTube okay. Right? Yeah, Facebook um, Live. That's a, good that's a better way to go. That <laughs> might be the way, just because I know that would be an easy uh, family conversation. You know, people can just tag, <laughs> tag them in on Facebook, like, hey, come in here and have a question with us. or have a chat Yes. Us. Yes, exactly. It, it's the uninvited that will be uh, interesting, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but that can be moderated. Um, yeah. Easily. Moderated. Yeah. Yes. yes. I don't know about moderation. I, I think just let it fly and see what happens. Yeah. Are you ready that. to set the house on fire already? Yeah. No, no, not me. It's not me. <laughs> he said they're setting their own houses on fire. Set, set the barbecue on fire. How about that? <laughs> oh, yeah, that would be great if we could set this up, especially in, like, Pretty Brown Dancers, um, Ayana, um, or... Is that a group or something? Is that a yeah. thing? Where is it? Pretty yeah. Brown Dancers, Black Ballerinas. There's a couple of different groups. Oh, for sure. Yeah, you guys do that, and I'll, I'll definitely come on and talk. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's a, good, that's a good way to do it. Yeah. Yeah, we can do it through a group. And I have some schools directly, you know what I mean, that, um, like back home. I'm from Cincinnati originally, so there's some oh, okay. schools there that uh, I know if I told them to come into the chat, just for the simple fact that they want the information for their students, Sure. Um, they would come in and chat with yeah. us and yeah i mean I, I think you're right i mean i think easing into things is always a good way with people mm -hmm. yeah that's not my way as you probably have gathered but in this instance it's probably a good idea yeah, i'm trying to adjust you know yeah, look i don't I mean, want to be I'm... wrong for a second longer than i have to be that's why even with the children's book thing i it, i'll admit it in public right now i don't care you know like if i'm wrong that okay we'll change the view on that no problem you know and I was um, speaking to my, my stepmother and she is a grant writer. She does a different, a bunch of different um, helps uh, fun, get funding for several different charities and foundations. And one of the things that we discussed was the fact that sometimes, especially when you're working with marginalized and disenfranchised communities, you do have to take an extra effort to, to get, find the right carrot because they're so used to the carrot being, a trick or yeah. um, meant to humiliate them or exploit them in a different way. So I think that's great, you know, that you're willing to <laughs> go slow. Well, I mean, look, I, I think uh, 
it's pretty understandable that trust is an issue for all. I mean, I don't just trust the world. Are you kidding me? Right. <laughs> I, I don't think we need carrot or stick, frankly. I think we just need the truth. You know? Yeah. <clears throat> But then give people time to uh, absorb it on their own terms. I, I think really that, right, nobody wants, look, I mean, no, no living thing wants to be restrained. Like my cat, you know, if I try to hug her, you know, she's like, get me out of here. Or even when Misha <laughs> was like two years old, try to try to restrain a toddler. <laughs> yeah. Nobody wants to, that. Nobody wants that. And so that's why I'm kind of like, well, just do your thing, you know. Take the information and do what you, you know, and I'm here if you need something. That that's my approach, all across. It doesn't matter what a person looks like. It just that's why we'll see. And that's the issue I have with the battle about. world is, for sure, you're not controlling me, uh, you know, and therefore I'm not controlling you, and that's how I do it. You know, we, mm -hmm. um, you know, you, uh, you know, I'm not going to be compelled to do anything other than follow the laws for the most part, <clears throat> and I'm not going to compel anyone else to do anything. That, that that's just I'm against that 100. percent So. But the battle world's not that way. There's all kinds of craziness, right? Oh, yeah. Don't do this and don't do that. Nah, I don't know. That's not going to fly at all. Well, I... So maybe one of you should say something charming to not end on that. <laughs> well, I no, mean... You know, I like... I, I, the older I get, the more I learn. I, I've always liked straight facts, right? And... <laughs> That's just not how ballet was packaged to us. Like you said, it was always about all these other things. Yeah. All these other things. And so you do get wrapped up in the culture of it. And sometimes a culture that does not speak to you or belong to you. You know what I mean? Assimilating and all that. And it doesn't even become about the movement anymore. So someone talking about the biology and the mechanics of your body to me is is where we should be thinking. That's not how sure. we should be thinking. You know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, the rest of it just is a product of that anyway. Like, you're not going to be musical if you're unstable. If you feel unstable physically, like balance-wise, you're not, you can't be musical. So why are we even talking about music? It's right. why I don't put music in the, the classes right now, because it's just a distraction at that point. Yeah. I would like to. I mean, it's more pleasant, you know, and it, it like, may, there's a way to do it. But for me, I've, there's too much intervention needed in the beginning talking yeah. and explaining and it's like we don't need you know the especially ballet music i mean that's enough to make you want to not ever show up again anywhere it's the ballet music's <laughs> horrible class music right it's it's just the worst <laughs> so it's i can't hear that it's it's like a you know you'll give someone ptsd with that you know just every day ding, 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 wow. ding, 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 ding. you know i mean just what is going on here you know this is horrible it, I mean, it's all, you know, I mean, <clears throat> I'll take a, a drum circle or something over that. It's just, just... <laughs> no, it's like, I started in modern dance, actually. That's where the drum circle comes from. So I've been in those. Oh, yeah. yeah. Me too. A thousand I, years I, ago. I, I actually, yeah, that's my, that'll be a different conversation for us <laughs> day about oh, okay. ballet for contemporary dancers. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, you, all you need is just the fundamentals and then do your thing. Yeah. You don't you don't need yeah. to do a ballet class if you just don't need any of that. Mm -hmm. You definitely don't need to stand there, you know, in some kind of I mean who thought pink tights is a good idea or white or tights or any, you know, a oof bad. Right. Unless yeah. it goes with the color scheme. <laughs> <laughs> what color scheme would that be? Well, I'm, I'm I'm just saying if it matches your outfit. Now as a uniform as an adult, I appreciate, you know, my own aesthetic and um but as a kid because of I, because of how my brain was wired, <laughs> I had to have like perfect pink tights. And I know. <laughs> well, they probably look better on black legs. I, I'd imagine. Although I haven't analyzed it. Well, um, I don't know. Well, like, it yeah, depends on the. It had to be the perfect color for me. Like I was very particular. I had to have um, like ballet pink tights from Block. That was the only lined, um, oh, seamed tights. Yeah. yeah, I was. I'm a different person now, guys. <laughs> well, I mean, I didn't have a choice. I my school was you are wearing this based on your level. You oh, know, oh, yeah. Okay. Had a based so on that's... based on what what um skill level we were, or like our height, like actual grade level. We had. Yeah, what what would you all put? What, what what kind of um color scheme would you think people should? Uh... I mean, if you're going to make a, it's probably good to have some kind of uniform color scheme just so, you know, I, I don't know, maybe it isn't. Should, should kids, I'm talking about like teenagers, should it just be wear whatever 
you know, I, whatever as you feel like. As long as they wear tights in. and leotard and you can correct them, that's all I would care about. Yeah, okay. I mean, I, I want to just be able to see your body. You know, I um, I didn't grow up in schools where you could wear like a lot of exposed leg and shorts and things like that. But um, I, I mean, I've always been a shapely person, even as a child, like as a kid. So like me in pink tights, I was already defeated before we started class looking at my legs. <laughs> You know what okay. I mean? Like I that was not my jam at all. I mean, of course I <laughs> I did what I had to do, but and I and I understand be, learn, having to have lines and match everybody in the class. Oh, no, no, no. The, the, but, the, the, the pink and white ties don't create anything like yeah, a line. It wasn't doing That's it just, for me. No, it doesn't do it for anybody. It, it doesn't yeah. create the line at all. Actually, yeah. it breaks the line. What you want is a solid color, like all black or something. Yeah, I was actually about to say whenever I had to wear all black for class, those are my favorite days because yeah, yeah, it's a know, good color. Yeah. yeah, it's, a it's not. It's not a them. distraction to me. You know, it's not a distraction. Mm -hmm. I like you can colors. still see everything. <laughs> like, I, love colors. I, I like colors, colors and patterns. <laughs> yeah. I like weird. Well, that's what I'm saying. Maybe, maybe you like, should. Everyone should just do their own thing. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm the type of person I will show up in a patterned leotard and then a solid tight or something right, like right. I, I don't care yeah. about. Uh, I black on black is fine, but I don't know. I'm just like I want flowers, <laughs> right? Right. right. Necklines. And there's nothing wrong with that. I just, you know, I know as a student, somebody telling me, making me wear pink tights was just like the bane of my existence. Agonizing, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, would never, I don't. I don't even make my students not I mean, like the kids. I'm just like tights and leotard. Please just do that. <laughs> just like just do that. I don't need. Please don't wear anything crazy. Like some some people show up in like pajamas yeah. and a football t-shirt, and I'm like, what am I supposed to do with this? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of things I have to fight now with my students. I have this. There's a new trend. This is fun. You'll you guys will think this is hilarious um, because the the thing that I enjoy about listening to you, Eric, is that you are kind of well. I don't know about you, but I'm very kind of like. Does this logically make sense? What we're doing? <laughs> no emotion yeah. about it. Well, because I yeah. have some, there's this new trend um, in one of my schools I'm teaching at. It's really a pre-acro class, but I give them a lot of technique because their 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 school is expecting them to just like do crazy back bends, but like never have conditioned their abs or like things like that. So right. we do a lot of technique, whether they want to or not. But we were working on some sort of turns, and I had two girls roll their tights down and over their feet <laughs> and i was like you mean huh. from the top no like over their feet like they had their tights rolled up to their ankles they didn't have shoes on you know we were doing like oh. whatever oh, before no. that but they were, were, were so they, their feet would be slippery to do the turn and i just <laughs> i just literally i burst out laughing and they're like what are you laughing at and i was like i just think it's hilarious that you think that the tights are doing the turn. I, yeah, I just, exactly. Yeah, you know, like, like it just was a funny, <laughs> it was a funny yeah. thing for me to watch because, like, as a kid growing up in in technique, that's just so anti. But like, whatever culture was going on in this school, oh, it's time for us to turn. Let's put our tights <laughs> down. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I it, just, it, it just blew yeah. me. <laughs> That would be funny to see. Just like, all right, turn time. <clears throat> you know, yeah. and then you... Everybody's <laughs> putting their tights down. I'm like, oh, guys, some... this is a lawsuit. Everyone here is going to fall right, <laughs> yeah. in the neck, right in front of me, and I'm letting yeah. it happen. Like, <laughs> yeah. Please roll your tights back up. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's kind of like the, the floor obsession, too. It really isn't. It really isn't the floor. You know, I mean, a less oh, slippery yeah, floor yeah. is, is good floor. when you're learning, but, you know, it, it isn't the floor. You know, the Soviets danced on the, the worst wood slippery floor you could imagine right which i could imagine help them and their technique in the long run for turns yeah okay that makes sense, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah it makes sense <laughs> you have any you have any more tough questions or uh, calling it calling it a uh, uh did we ask you tough questions i thought we were no no you didn't really no you didn't you went, you went easy on me you went easy on me this time yeah yeah we're, we were being sweet we're in the, the trust tree house whatever we're on clubhouse tree house same thing yeah exactly we're new we're, we're all new to each other so it makes yeah. sense that we you know fluff first <laughs>
Clef before we fold. Yes. Well, I thought it was great. I enjoyed talking to both of yeah. you. Yeah. Good to talk to you. Yeah. Great. Well, let's let's see what people think. That'll okay. Be... I'm All not right. going to look anywhere, by the way, but you guys can let me know. I'll, 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 I will let you know. I'll upload this. Uh, like Reddit tomorrow. or Reddit or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll um put it out on all of my platforms and stuff and send you guys the oh, links. Yeah. Send me links. Yeah. We'll do it too. Yeah. We'll do it too. All right. Awesome. Well, that was Good. great. And um, let's do this again sometime. Yes. Okay. Yes. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Right. Thank you. Have Bye. a good one, ladies. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.